Hi, my name's Therese from Lost in Paper and it's time for video three for my Same But Different Christmas card series in 2020 and today it's all about plaid slash tartan. <laughs> we call it tartan. I used to do Highland dancing when I was a wee girl and I used to have some beautiful tartans that my mother made. The skirts and stuff, you know that. I can't remember what it's called now. I did it for like eight years. Sash, that's right, I had a sash. I even had one of those things on my hat, brooch. I had a brooch. <laughs> anyway, I've got six cards to share with you today and we're gonna be having lots of fun with plaid slash tartan. <laughs> Now today I have three basic ideas and you're going to get two cards in each and I'm starting with some backgrounds. So starting with a really simple concept here and using plaid in a background. I thought it would be really nice to have a big bold sentiment on the card and I've got this merry and bright cut in some gold mirror cardstock and it's an MFT stamp from I think it was released last year and it's going to be a big bold statement on my card. And here is my inspiration for this year's video. I couldn't resist this paper pad. It's from Memory Box and it's called Christmas Plaid. How awesome is it? <laughs> the front side of every piece of cardstock has some gold foiling on it. And that's what made me choose the mirror gold for the sentiment here. And I ended up going with a really light colored cardstock. And while my sentiment's drying on the foam, I thought I'd just choose which cardstock I was going to use there. But I thought I would also share with you how I remove the large sentiments out of my foam piece. I like to push out all the centers of the letters first, and that way, once I've got it separated from the foam piece, I'm not putting pressure against the new adhesive that's um, still drying. And then I can just, once the center of the letters is removed, then I can just kind of peel away the sentiment from the remaining piece of foam. And that seems to work well for me. I've got some of the hem stitch rectangles here from Spellbinders. And I've got a two for one here. I'm gonna do some die cutting and actually die cut the two pieces at the same time. And what that's doing, it's die cutting uh, the outside border of my cardstock as well as that hem stitch rectangle in the center, which I think is a real fun sort of element to add to a card. And just sort of takes it up the next level a little bit. And by popping it up with some cardstock, just to strengthen the um, paper, like the plaid paper, and some adding some fun foam, I was able to sort of add that bit of dimension. But you could certainly adhere that directly to the front of your card if you were worried about postage and bulk. Now I've just used my matte medium to adhere my sentiment onto the front of the card and I thought because it says merry and bright I needed to add something that was merry and bright. <laughs> so I've got a little penny black bird here and it's from the Snow Much Fun stamp set. I stamped it in some Memento Tuxedo Black and added some really quick Copic colouring I did fussy cut it out, draw a couple of little legs and popped it up on a foam dot. Here I've just tried to catch the shimmer and shine of the sentiment on that, on this plaid. It's just beautiful. So I'm going to create my second background design now and I've grabbed another piece of the cardstock out of the paper pad. But hold tight because you don't need this paper pad to create these cards. I've got a couple of examples at the end of the video to share with you, giving you some ideas to create plaid without design paper. I have this time, I've using the gold mirror cardstock again and I've got the Alta New. Now these are the festive clusters die set and I just die cut that a few times because I wasn't sure exactly how many I was going to need and I'm just using my brush tool to get those intricate sort of die cuts apart and that works really well there's lots of different companies that make those I've die cut a rectangle panel and also a piece of white cardstock that I'm going to back that rectangle oh look 
My husband just came home. <laughs> Isn't he the sweetest? <laughs> I'll be right back. I did have to put them in some water. Anyway, <laughs> I have just strengthened that piece of design paper with uh, that other die cut rectangle of cardstock and then I'm simply adhering the gold portions. This is another really simple card. I've got my chisel pen. I'm finding this works really well adhering paper to paper. I wasn't sure how it's going to go with the mirror gold. I don't know if you've used any mirror cardstock before but if you get glue on the shiny side it can be a real problem and you lose the shine but I didn't have any problems with this chisel pen and I find that it adheres really well it's not very forgiving so you really need I mean you can lift it up and replace it but it doesn't work as well as the matte medium in that respect I ended up just using two pieces of these festive clusters and just cut the edges off and as I cut them off I just adhered them around the rest of my panel so that um, I didn't waste any really it was great now I've got a top fold card here and it's um, four and a half by five and a quarter what no other way around four and a quarter by five and a half and that's my usual size of cards that I make and I've stamped a sentiment it's from the festive point set set here set and then I've just popped up my panel on the front now my next idea was to use plaid to create some creatures on a couple of cards and one of the classic things you will see plaid used for is for deer and I've got this awesome leaping reindeer it's from Penny Black now I have some now this color is called taffy and it's almost like a a warm beige color and I've just die cut the deer out of some fun foam as well because what I thought would look good would be to pop the outside of the panel up over top of the plaid so I just added my matte medium and I'm adhering that together and then when it's been sitting after it's been sitting for a little bit and had a little bit of time to adhere I can just push out the center portion here and that's going to give me sort of a 3d effect with the deer but it did bite me a little bit here because <laughs> I forgot to add my sentiment and I'm doing that holding my breath and stamping the word joy which is from the MFT's hand lettered holiday greeting set which I use every year and I'm pretty excited because I think that this is one of the sets that they released in the vault this year I think they released a smaller version of it but I've got a feeling they've released the larger version which is the one I'm using here and it's a fave the sentiments on this set are gorgeous and if I if I can find it I will link it for you below and at my blog everything will be linked at my blog as well I can't fit everything on the YouTube description so if anything's missing from that list of products head through the link in the description below to my blog and of course you can send me a question at any time if you can't find something or you've got a question about what I've been creating <laughs> I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can my second creature I'm gonna make is a bird and this is almost um, Harper-esque I've kind of had that vibe happening so Charlie Harper I don't know if you're aware of him he is an illustrator and has a really unique style and I thought this plaid bird kind of I don't know you might disagree but anyway I did some die cutting with some circles to create my base of my bird I did have to support it on some cardstock because I wanted to pop it up again but obviously any of these cards you can recreate and not use the dimension if you do want like a flat version if you don't want the bulk to post your cards um, then just simply adhere it straight to the card front it's a four and a quarter square side folding card this one and a really simple way to create a creature you don't need any specific dies it's like it's not a bird die that I'm using I've used a heart die to create the wing the center of a tag to create the eye and I just cut a triangle for the beak 
and drew some legs with a Copic multi-liner. Really simple to do. And I did look up the difference between plaid and tartan because you know that you're special to me and I needed to tell you. But plaids are basically any crisscross patterns of two or more colours and tartans are plaids with a name to identify a community. And now that I've seen that, I do actually remember that my kilts that my mother made for me did have names and we used to actually order the fabric if we couldn't get the one we want from Scotland by name. Okay, so I did promise you a couple of other ways to create these without using that awesome paper pad from Memory Box, and that is to stamp your own pattern, plaid or tartan. <laughs> and firstly, I'm going to use a set that is specifically made for this. It's from Altenew and it's called Tartan and it's a builder background set so it has those square blocks that I was showing you that you can actually fill in the squares and create your own colors and mix and match of colors as well plus this outline background stamp which I love the look of this just on its own and I have stamped it in some morning mist ink it's a pigment ink that's one of the new Claire ones I'm playing with them at the moment and enjoying them. Not that I use a lot of pigment inks, but sometimes it's nice to spread your wings. <laughs> and I have stamped the Starry Night Christmas tree from Altenew just in some Nocturne ink. You could use any black ink that you have. That's just the one that was near me today. <laughs> and I decided to actually come in and stamp every other square of the pattern and I used a light grey ink which is the limestone. If you have a square stamp if you or you can create your own square stamp just by die cutting a square and using foam, some fun foam, you can easily stamp on foam, using fun foam as well. You could simply stamp or draw some lines, stamp your square and create a similar pattern you could also recreate this with cardstock too and there are die cuts that you can also have so if you have a die cut that you might be able to use or even a stencil there's some great stencils out there lots of ideas you could die cut a square out of some acetate create your own stencil and do it that way as well lots of options and in any color combo that you want all right so I've added a die cut Mary this is from the Mary and Joy that's a penny black die set and I've just popped that up on some fun foam the same way that I did with the Mary and Bright on the first card added a little Christmas sentiment which is from the Starry Night set cut that down and pop that up as well as well as a star and some lovely leather jewels from Pink Fresh Studio now the second way I'm going to create my own stamped plaid is with some striped stamps this time I'm freehanding it and this would actually be a really easy pattern to create if you just wanted to cut different size widths of strips of cardstock in different colors and you could just go to town use any colors any widths any size that you want and just adhere them down with some matte medium you could also um, add some stick it adhesive to the back of them if you can't be bothered using the liquid <laughs> adhesive and then they're already made like a sticker and you could just stick them straight on your cardstock. I'm working here on a piece of 80 pound Nina because sometimes I find if I make a mistake then I'm only throwing away a quarter sheet of A4 cardstock. I am not don't feel like I'm wasting a whole card. The other thing is that if I'm adding a lot of ink to a piece of cardstock sometimes it can get a little bit warpy and I don't want that to happen to my card front plus I find that my stamping is a little bit crisper on the 80 pound as opposed to the 110 and I don't know if that's just in my brain or if that's a true thing but that's I'm going with that too <laughs> uh, the two sets I've got here one is from Alan Hudson and that's the painted stripes stamp set and I use that for the wider stripe here 
and the plaid play set has all the like the thinner strips here that I'm using from and that's from Waffle Flower Crafts and I'm eyeballing this you could simply um, use your misty if that's what you had or and move your cardstock around to make sure that your stripes are straight I couldn't be bothered <laughs> the blocks the clear blocks actually make it easier and stamping with a block was a lot quicker so to decorate this card I thought it'd be shun, shun it'd be fun <laughs> to share so sharing and fun is shun okay just to let you know that <laughs> But I thought it would be fun to actually show you that you can have a bit of fun and use a playful image on a plaid design. And this little Merry Reindeer from Alton U is kind of cartoonish and not something I would have normally thought to add to a plaid, but it worked really well. I did some simple Copic colouring here and initially stamped it with some alcohol friendly ink I think it was tuxedo black and I left the stamp in my misty tool while I did the coloring and that way I could actually re-stamp it with a pigment black ink afterwards just to crisp up those edges and this is a great trick I find because I must have used tuxedo because it's not as jet black as the pigments I wanted to cut it up right up to the edge and I just wanted to quickly show you that to the inside pieces when you're cutting something out do them first <laughs> and then I just use scissors to cut around the edge and to hide those cut edges I added like some gray texture we call it texture that's a brand name uh, marker marker <laughs> brand name in Australia okay I have a couple of wreath die cuts which are from the Joyful Wreaths die set. They're an MFT set and I did a couple of different greens here and layered them up just using the dotted adhesive which gives me some wiggle room because you can actually unadhere and re-adhere if you're not actually getting it right the first time. It did take me a couple of goes to line them up the way that I wanted. I've popped up the head of my deer because I did want him to sort of sit up a little bit within the wreath and how cool is he on that stamped background? <laughs> and added these little hoofs and this is a sentiment I made a speech bubble sentiment using the chat bubbles from Penny Black and this white heat embossed a sentiment from the same Merry Reindeer stamp set and I've got some of these they droplets they're like red droplets from Ellen Hutz and I thought they worked perfectly on this design so I hope you have had some fun here today I hope I've given you some inspiration to use plaid. You could certainly change up these ideas and have lots of fun with different design papers or create your own plaids. I can't wait to see where you go with these ideas. So don't forget to hang around. There's a couple more videos from my previous year's Same But Different Christmas series linked here. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.